Welcome back into the GSMC Sports Podcast as we're now going to be diving into the Minnesota Vikings who continue to roll out of the gates. They are now 4-0 with what I would now consider three high-profile wins against the 49ers, the Texans, and now the Packers. Sure, there's been a little bit of injury stuff involved in those games, but ultimately still, I think that at this point, you look at, it's not just about the results of them getting wins, it's the process of all of it. Now, this wasn't a perfect game for the Vikings by any means. I mean, they ultimately almost ended up blowing their 28 to nothing lead that they developed in the first half, but it's still overall, I think, very convincing, and I don't think that there's a ton of ad- abnormalities that are putting the Vikings in this position. The one that you could really point to is Sam Darnold, and is he going to sort of come back down to what our preseason expectations were, which is a fair question that I myself definitely still have to some degree. But overall, this is a very good, talented Vikings team that is extremely well coached, that Darnold, it's not like he has to be, you know, some people want to throw him like MVP, dark horse candidacy. I would be shocked if that were to happen, and I definitely would not bet on that. But that being said, I do think that, you know, he can keep up a level of play of just being good enough to win, and the Vikings are a talented roster to the point where they can continue to rattle these off. So, like I mentioned, they jumped out to a 28 to nothing lead over the Packers. You saw Jordan Addison, who was playing in his first game of the season, dealing with an injury through the first few weeks, that he was a big part of it, scoring two early touchdowns. He just really is the perfect complement to this Vikings offense where you have Justin Jefferson who draws so much attention quite literally on that first touchdown. He ended up drawing the safety over to his side of the field on the left. Jordan Addison, just one guy to beat, an inexperienced member of the Packers secondary, just puts a little bit of a double move on him and gets behind him for the touchdown there. And then you get the ball in his hands and he just has that explosive ability as well, which is what happened for the jet sweep where it was Justin Jefferson also making an excellent block on that play. But really it was just Addison one V one against the linebacker and he, he shook him and got to the end zone and that's what he's capable of doing. And again, when you talk about, you know, just sort of getting some of these playmakers back. Jordan Addison, TJ Hawkinson as well, who started the year on the physically unable to perform list. He is now able to be back at practice this week. So he'll be another layer to add into this offense. And so you have, you know, the star and Justin Jefferson, but you have layers to this team. And then that sort of leads me into the other big takeaway that I've had from the Vikings up to this point in the season is now they actually have a running game. Aaron Jones has been an incredible addition for this offense. Last season, the Vikings were 29th in the NFL in rush yards per game with 91.4. This year, they're up to 14th at 123 rush yards per game, which isn't necessarily an elite mark for the Vikings, but it's drastically improved. The offensive line is actually winning their one-on-ones up front as well. And Aaron Jones, I mean, he's got that fire to him. Clearly, if you couldn't see it this past week against his former team in the Packers, he just seems so ready to sort of prove himself that I think it's been, you know, sort of one of the more underrated additions in the NFL from this past offseason is it is instantly paying dividends for the Vikings, adding a hard-nosed running back like Aaron Jones to the mix. Because as much as Sam Darnold has been an awesome redemption story up to this point in the year, the Vikings and, you know, whether it was Darnold or J.J. McCarthy, the idea wasn't that it was going to be a quarterback putting the team on its shoulder to having success where Sam Darnold, you know, he is able to have a little bit more wiggle room because A, he has so many options from a receiver standpoint and then B, the fact that they're actually able to move the ball up front in front of him. And Darnold, in this game specifically, I thought that, he was pretty good. He was great in the beginning as they built up that 28 to nothing lead. But we saw some cracks in the armor. 
I do think that he is, you know, at least a decent amount to blame for the Packers even having a shot towards the end of this game where you look at Darnold in the second half and he has an interception in the red zone to take points off of the board on their first drive of the second half. He ends up having a fumble in their own territory that gives the Packers a short field and they're able to score a touchdown you know, immediately in the red zone. That made it a one-score game with 10 minutes left. So... A couple costly turnovers for Darnold. Ultimately, there was enough good that came from him as well. He passed for 275 yards and threw three touchdowns. So by no means am I trying to tear Sam Darnold down, but there are realistic expectations for Darnold that he's not going to just all of a sudden be one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL, that he has some flaws. Now, Overall, he's been a huge net positive for the Vikings, but if you have hesitations, I do think that that's where it comes from. That being said, on the other side of this, I still am very in on the Packers. And obviously, you know, if you're doing power rankings for where they are currently at, the Vikings, based off of how these two teams are playing, the Vikings have to be in front of the Packers, but. This was a game where I thought that ultimately this was a pretty bad game for, from the Packers and even still they ended up losing by just two points against one of, if not the hottest team in the NFL to start the season where it was Jordan Love's first game back from injury and it did sort of look that way just with some of the inconsistencies. He ended up throwing three interceptions. He just didn't look right throughout the game. I thought his touch on the ball was a little bit erratic. It was throwing low a little bit to start the game. Then he ended up hit it, throwing too high. I think it was to Luke Musgrave or Tucker Craft. I get those tight ends confused sometimes. But, you know, airmailed the tight end for one of his interceptions as well. He threw a little bit of a a uh, hospital pass as well that ended up getting Christian Watson hurt. So it sounds like as of this morning, it's nothing torn. It's a high ankle sprain, but you know, sort of put one of his best receivers in a really bad position in the middle of the field, throwing into traffic then. So this was not a, this was not a good Jordan Love game. That being said, even in a game that isn't good for jo Jordan Love, he threw for 389 yards and four touchdowns, which is, is just kind of why I think that this is going to be all right for the Packers. Now, losing Watson for a few weeks, that definitely hurts, and I'm sure Jordan Love feels bad about that play in particular. But, you know, Jordan Love, I thought he got more comfortable as the game went on. Either way, the fact that they did get put in such a deficit, I mean, it's a lot to ask your quarterback returning from injury to throw 54 passes in their first game. So... I think that ultimately he's going to be able to work his way back. You see Jaden Reed, who continues to really impress, in my opinion. He ends up, you know, he's really emerging as the number one for this team. Seven receptions, 139 yards, and a touchdown in this game. He and Love ended up linking up for a pretty impressive touchdown pass at one point as well, where Love just sort of floated it out to the right for Reed to go up and get it. So, I think a lot of positives there for the Packers, even in what was, I think, a bad game. Now, that's also without Jair Alexander, the star cornerback, who ended up getting ruled out just a couple hours before the game. So this is a situation where Packers are 2-2. Two and two, They end up losing this game. A lot of people are going to be sort of off the scent of them a little bit. But I still feel really good about them moving forward this season. Um, I think that... Ultimately, it was more so the Vikings' self-inflicted wounds that let the Packers back into this game. But it makes me think that, you know, the Packers are going to still be in a very solid position. Now, looking at the NFC North as a whole right now, just very quickly here to end off this segment, I think it's really interesting looking at what is maybe the most complete division in the NFL. I mean, you can make an argument for the AFC North depending on where you're at with the Browns. I still feel like it's the NFC North that overall top to bottom is the best collection of talent. And as things stand now, uh, the Detroit Lions are going to be playing the Seahawks tonight. So 
We'll see. I think this is a little bit of a prove it, not a full prove it spot for the Lions, but sneakily a really big game for them, who I don't think that they've been all that convincing up to this point yet in the season. And it would be really good to see after the amount of financial investment that they sort of rolled out this past off season between Jared Goff and Penny Sewell and Amon Ross St. Brown and just spending across the board that they do sort of shape into who we think they're going to be. I think they will be okay, but again, a little bit of a pivotal spot here on Monday Night Football. Either way, Vikings are going to head into week five with the top spot in the NFC North. You look at the Chicago Bears, who were able to pull out a win as well against the Los Angeles Rams yesterday, that this is a very competitive you know, division, top to bottom, even still, and the Vikings are now in a position where they have the high ground. Now, I don't know what the odds are. I'd be actually curious to see if we can pull them up super quick if we still have time for that. But uh, what the what the odds would be for who is going to win that division because I would probably still lean with the Lions. But, I mean, the Vikings now, again, have a little bit of ground. Now, going to be a tough couple weeks for them where – this upcoming week, they are going to be headed to London to face the Jets then. And that's a little bit of an interesting game. And actually, I forgot, they do have a bye week, week six. And they'll be able to head into a game at home against the Lions off of a bye week. That Now, if the Vikings can pick up these next two wins, I think that's when we are getting in the very realistic territory of the Vikings can win the NFC North. But let me know what your thoughts are in the comments section as we are going to continue to talk NFL throughout the week. Still a whole bunch of games that I want to dive into. Tomorrow we're going to be specifically getting into the NFC East as well. The Eagles who suffered a big loss. The Commanders who might just be the best team in that division all of a sudden. That We're going to dive into that. But to finish off the show today, we have to talk about the news that broke on Friday, and that is that the Knicks are acquiring all-star center Carl Anthony Towns as they continue to invest into this core and have championship aspirations. So we are going to be diving into that situation, but before we do so, we do have to take our final break of the show. So stick with us, and we will be right back. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 